Uh, I had to have fun with you all. So, uh, a lot of requests for a narrated breakdown. So, here are a few uh, little key points here in our index. So, who's following me where in advice? If you could in the comment section, let me know how you get notifications about my videos. Uh, number two is narration versus music. This one I'll be narrating mostly. Um, striking key index someone asked for, like my, my numbering system and quick sit and all that. Are my breakdowns too advanced? Not enough, etc. Requesting breakdowns, please, everyone just chill on that. Um, and I have some big things going on in my real life. Um, so just keep that in mind if things are a little slow for the next couple months. Um, so let's begin. First, we Rose's incredibly diverse skill set. And of course, we have to uh, give credit where credit is due. So progressive pressure styling started in her native Milwaukee, the age of five, sounds familiar. Um, Rufus, Pat Barry and the likes, but Trevor Whitman especially is the one I want to focus on today because I believe her hands are what have really gotten her to the dance. Um, she's always had pretty good instincts, submissions, scrambles, etc. But that guy right there, he was a, um, I'm pretty sure he was a professional boxer and had some kind of injury or some type of like heart issue that, that kept him from competing. Point being, I'm a, uh, I'm a huge fan of Whitman's. Um, he's fantastic and very, very unheralded, honestly. The difference I see mostly is in her, her footwork or ability to be precise and create angles. Uh, one of the things that I do is I, I'm going to use the three S's, which is strike, scramble, and submission. They're kind of in order, and it's, it's her strength, you know, amidst chaos. Uh, Rose likes to kind of create chaos, and she, and she thrives in it. So she kind of strikes her way into scrambles, therefore into submissions. And there's a method to the madness. No, it's not like every fight goes that way in that order. But as you're seeing here, there's there's a lot of uh, variety to her attack, and it is progressing uh, almost at an exponential rate. You're seeing here like a you know varietal submissions, varietal attacks. You know, with the traditional martial arts background, going back to age five, not not so odd, right? So um, you saw a lot of her TMA, especially when I was watching back. I, I never really watched the Ultimate Fighter, but looking at it, she was doing a lot of like long kicks, like teeps long round kicks and jabs to kind of close distance um just just very you know she she had a lot of variety as i say variety is the, the spice of striking in mma remember this for later see how that was kind of like a, a weak center center line break i do like the kick upon exit though so i'd put that i i think that the uh, constantly developing and or improving hands um, is what's kind of refined her pressure, you know, and then it, it, everything is symbiotic that then Therefore improves your scramble game, improves your submission game, etc, etc Feed off of each other. So going back to our Invicta days there again is a long three and this opponent is I think it's Kathina Catron and see this nice rangy left hook and then Kind of follows up and here's this is a semi scramble although it doesn't quite hit the ground um, but she tried to hang on and thug in and bug in right here. Check this out. Kind of turns it around, gets a clip right there from the overhook. And I'm going to, of course, give you a, a better angle on this thing. What, what I want you to take, take a look at is her left leg right there in through. See how the leg weaves and it creates kind of like a, like, kind of like how a pendulum sweep works, but also blocks an escape at the same time. And as she gets her to the ground, she can kind of pinch her knees together and uh, extend out hip up so in her time in, in tough here you saw a lot of the the traditional martial arts acumen so you'll see like a leg kick feint or at least a low kick into a side kick kind of like gsp was doing to bisping throughout their fight and to come up to the face like that is uh, quite impressive i certainly don't mind the duchy or the 540 back kick there um clearly she has some you know the the taekwondo and the karate stylings down those lead leg, you know, front side kicks to that high and to throw them that effortlessly and the way that she kind of blitz shifts, those are all, you know, staples of, of say, Kempo. Um, she's got a wonderful rear naked choke and um, a few of them that, that came a little bit later later on. I'm going to uh, break down for you a little bit more in detail. So here's a beautiful Kimura. She's just got a, she's got a fantastic submission game. Now watch how she used that Kimura grip to lock up and get the sweep and then kind of clamp her legs together and block hips. What you want to pay attention to is post roll and well actually before too. See, see how her feet are here when she locks it up. She's going to use her hips to kind of Hickson roll, which is like 
up and away at a 45 degree angle and then she pinches her feet together at the end so she ends up in the finale after beating i think it was three people on on tough goes against carla esparza i put that she she displayed a really good technique and promise really um despite losing the third via rear naked choke i thought she landed well her hands look good she just looks different in a lot of ways to me now um but for better or for worse um but it's uh, it's almost like looking at a different person so back in the saddle she gets right back in at 192 against the uh very gamey angela hill here um i think that was pre her wearing wigs to weigh-ins so some some of the the scrappiness that she was doing inside is kind of what what led to these scrambles now here this is this is something you see a lot is her from from like a turtle position her like scrambles to get someone's back so i want you to just take take note of her her leg hooks how she's manipulating the posture it's basically her attack on a turtle defense so right here you see an over under see her left leg there and also how her head is pressing forward angela's head and she's got her right arm all the way around cupping on angela's left shoulder which is really important to get super deep there and then you can kind of get the hand behind the head and that's well done again we just saw that in the gsp best Bank fight and same theme different fighter of course and if ever there was a yin to roses yang it would be Freebird. if you don't get that joke i don't care um this is uh they're they're just they're young and pretty you know they're they're peers in, in a lot of ways but if you if you notice in this fight you start seeing rose amp up things like foot fainting how she's breaking that angle with check hooks and of course the striking see how she kind of just gets out of the way and, and it's not as though page isn't long um of course note this again see again oh faint two three two Oh, tried it again kind of with an up jab, but that 3-2 is really developing now in her ability to evade afterwards. Right there, 3-2. Standing in the pocket until she sees something. There's a no sell 2. 1-2. 1-2. One, 1-2. Two. One, two. One, two. Knee from the clinch. 1-2. It was more of a 3-2, actually. But the point being, Paige is clearly losing the stand-up exchanges. She kind of goes for like a double overhook clinch here. And she is met by a little hip wheel. Um... And I, I put the proper judo name, although the nerds will surely correct me. So I put strike earlier, scramble, submission. And there's the back take into rear naked that you'll see so frequently from her. It's got a hell of a squeeze. And for people that have rolled with her, they say that she is just, she's fantastic in transition. So, um, you know, the RNC being one of her, her that's one of everyone's kind of best attacks, but her ability to get there, you know, to get the back. That was very textbook as far as where her feet were positioned. Um, and that deja vu type when um, we got to kind of look at this this fight with Tisha Torres before we look at the, the more modern one, right? Um, I don't think at that point in her career she was kind of ready for a pressure fighter like that. Um, so it, it was it was very close and she did this again making for an interesting fight for sure but she was able to get out of that so fast forward three years and here come three twos and your three s's i want you to take uh make special note of some of the check hooks and angling out that she's doing there's a three two and angle a nice long teep and balance good footwork is always key to pressure fighters you know keeping them kind of at bay you want to strike long stay long when you need to and also understand you know what short striking is and how it works so she angled off that right to kind of like head leans left look at that long three straight two beautiful stuff um and she ended up winning that one by decision so it was, they're, they're tit for tat at this point uh carolina is obviously a monster of a striker and this fight i you know when i rewatched it it was much closer than i had remembered she looked incredible in spots here early she was really fast with her hands now here's where her footwork just made it but between the last fight and this one look at how light she is on her feet and her ability to move backward and forward check hook look at this beautiful angle now watch her head too see how fleet of foot she is to get out of the way there and that's beautiful beautiful footwork and striking she's that's it's high level and there we go with the two one two one two beautiful stuff and she was certainly getting on the chin there but there was a, a fatigue setting in for sure see there after the push because of this is sparta kick there's a couple of clean rights there that are short that just aren't really doing much and uh right there is you didn't i didn't obviously this breakdown isn't about carolina so i'm not going to really 
you know, put too much emphasis on that. But if there was a difference in the fight or a deciding factor in how she won, even though it was a split decision, I would say it was the clinch work for sure. Um, Rose didn't, didn't look all that good there. Honestly, I thought that would come into play in the Joanna fight as well. Um, it didn't. So after that close decision, you had the forever dangerous um, karate hottie, uh, forever ridiculous name, which this wonderful head kick led to. So this is I, this is my uh, you know semi analysis via text, but the the center line break to the overly extended and bladed right because you always want blind strikes whether it's head kicks or powerful punches you always want them blind. So see here now how she kind of uses it like a like a, a three two and an extra shove on that shoulder to kind of angle out more to her left and be more again I'll use that word blind for that head kick is just wonderful on the fly. Again, karate hottie is absurd to me, I, I, but I'll, I'll use it for now. And what you want to notice here is she makes the mistake of kind of turning toward the camera here. And she has no control on that right wrist and or arm whatsoever. Arm is now deep past the left shoulder, which is the choking arm. Coinciding right hip is bumping on the right hip to block. Now watch her left foot there. So she's that right foot was to propel the left, left hook over the left hip. And note that the right leg stays on the ground until right here. And that's deep, deep, deep. See how high up she is? And wraps it up. And that's when she'll leave her feet. And see how she's crossing her feet there? A lot of times when you're like a white belt, they'll tell you not to do that. There's positional things you can do to cross your feet. It's okay if you're trying to stretch out the body like that, especially. So, obviously, the, the talk of the town, the, the woman of the hour, there was certainly this... I don't know, just feeling of, of bullying going on. And I, I'm a huge Joanna fan, and I'm not a non-Rose fan, of course. Um, but that's just how it felt from afar. And not too many people had Rose picking. But as soon as this started, she just looked calm and cool. And her movement was, you know, was slick. Jo Joanna was kind of hanging in there. But there's a couple of moments where I think she had a kind of, um, what do I do now? You know, like, she just, <laughs> you're not... I'm not used to seeing her ever really look lost. She's always very in control. So at this point, it was obviously not going to be a, a way up by any stretch, nor was Rose going to be shook by the, you know, telling her she's weak, etc., etc. She's standing there right in the pocket. And of course, to get hit and not, or to hit and not get hit, right? I mean, this is strike 101. She's just doing some beautiful stuff like calf kicks and that distance right there. 2 3 2. See, 2 fake. 3 2. And. When it slowed down, it doesn't look like anything landed too much like on the chin or on, the, on any button spot, but nevertheless, here we are. Joanna is very good at defensive scrambling, whereas, you know, Rose would be kind of like the offensive scrambler, if you will. Um, but it was a kind of a role reversal, right? Amazing striking, amazing little recovery there by Joanna. She kind of shrugs up, and I love what Rose did there. If you don't have anything, you strike your way out of the clinch. Never just leave the clinch. This head kick from Joanna. She's still got she's still on her feet here, and that point was the turning point to me. That kind of long hook was looking crisp, but she's in and out. See right, boom, and then she didn't have the hook to kind of sit up there because Joanna faded left rather than right. And then on the believable. I also just wanted to, as an aside. But if anyone knows Trevor Whitman, tell him I want to pick his brain. Put him on retweet something. Because this is my, whenever I, from anything from sparring to just playing around, that's one of my favorite combinations of all time. It's kind of the long that She didn't need the kick, clearly. But that was actually Rose's first knockout in her career, believe it or not. Um, this was hard to watch, yet amazing at the same time. So, anywho, congrats, champ. Um... And I just put everyone, be sure to like, share, subscribe, no particular order. And amazing fighter, amazing fight. And let me know what you think of um, me talking versus me putting all of this to music. Because I'd much rather do music. Thanks everyone. Cheers.